2021 Honda CBR 1000 Triple R Fireblade SP. All new and better than ever. And I'm going to tell you all about it and give my opinion on it. Stay tuned. Let's go for a ride. You are watching Cycle Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today. Continually video suggestions, but you may find what you're looking for by visiting my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab my videos. And those are a bunch of playlists with all of my videos categorized in them to make it easier for you to navigate through. It all started with the first generation Fireblade, the CBR 900 Double R. Music, the most important sport motorcycle in the last two decades, the Honda CBR 900 RR. Not just another new machine, a whole new dimension in sport motorcycles. There has never been another machine quite like it. Never before has so much muscle been combined with such phenomenal handling. Astonishing horsepower, backed into a mere 400 pound package. Fast forward 27 years to the ninth generation. All new Honda CBR 1000 Triple R Fireblade SP. Better than ever. For this new ninth generation CBR, Honda decided to bring the Fireblade name over to the United States. First time ever. So now the bike will be known as a 2021 CBR 1000 Triple R Fireblade SP, which only comes in the HRC tricolor that you see here. But this bike is all new from top to bottom, including a brand new 999cc liquid cool inline four engine that has a 13 to one compression ratio and the same bore and stroke as the RC 213V championship race bike. It uses finger follower rocker arms, which reduces the inertia weight of the valve system by 75% compared to the shim and bucket system. It has a cam drive that uses a shorter chain, and it has a narrower intake side valve angle that creates higher power output. It also has lighter weight forged aluminum pistons, which is the same material that's used on the RC213V. It has a larger throttle body which is enlarged from 48 millimeters to 52 millimeters to reduce intake air pressure drop. It also has titanium connecting rods, which reduces weight. So that all adds up to 215 horsepower and 83 pounds feet of torque. And you can utilize all that power with Honda's new Honda selectable torque control, which comes with five power curves, 10 torque control levels, three engine braking levels, and three levels of wheelie control. Basically what this system does, it automatically adjusts the engine power to optimize the torque at the rear wheel, reducing rear wheel slip. This bike also comes with a quick shifter for its 6-speed transmission and a more compact chassis with a frame that's a twin spar lightweight aluminum frame that has vertical and torsional rigidity increased by 18 and 9 percent for better feel and performance. Also, the bike has a longer swing arm for improved traction. And the new fairings incorporate MotoGP-inspired aerodynamic winglets, which effectively generate downforce at high speeds. As far as the suspension on this bike, it has top-of-the-line Olin's second-generation Smart EC suspension with an electronically controlled MPX fork for improved bump absorption. And for the rear, it has a Pro-Link single shock with 5.6 inches of travel. When it comes to stopping power, this bike has top-of-the-line Brembo Stylema brakes, which are the same ones used on the RC213V, which have 330mm discs at the front and a single 220mm disc at the rear. As far as the exhaust, you may not want to remove the stock of Kropovich titanium muffler because it has a special valve in the exhaust which helps boost torque at lower levels and increase top end horsepower. And this bike comes with a generous 4.3 gallon fuel tank and also a 525 chain with the following gearing. 16 tooth counter sprocket and a 43 tooth rear sprocket and this bike comes in at a svelte 443 pounds wet and also what i really love about this bike is that it comes with a larger full color tft display that includes nearly every gauge that you need engine temperature riding mode speedometer tachometer 
shifter setting, ABS level, gear position, remaining fuel, and much more. And of course, menu settings that allow you to control the full suite of electronic rider aids on this bike that's supported through the 6-axis IMU. And also what's really cool for this new bike, it comes with a smart key fob and keyless steering lock, so no more having to put the key in the ignition anymore you can keep it in your pocket as far as the stock tires it will come with Bridgestone Batlax RS11 tires and this bike will be available in June 2020 the price is to be determined but I'm sure it's not going to be cheap but before you street Rossi's go and lay down your hard-earned cash for this bike you might want to consider that this bike has more race oriented ergonomics Gone are the relaxed ergonomics like I had on my 2012 CBR 1000 double R. So basically this is a street legal track bike where they made the riding position more aggressive by moving the bars forward and lower and the pegs higher up and farther back so you're in a more superman riding position which is not conducive to comfortable street riding but perfect for racing at the track. As far as my opinion of this new bike after watching a few videos looking at some pictures and reading the spec sheet I must say Honda did an awesome job. This bike is now on par with the top super bikes in terms of performance and power output and also I love how Honda incorporated the winglets into the fairings of the bike so they don't stand out like a sore thumb unlike some of the other super bikes and I love the larger TFT display that has vibrant visual aids and has all the gauges you need even tells you how much fuel you'll have left uh, what I don't love is that it now has more race oriented ergonomics so you're in a more uh, a comfortable racing position which is good for the track that's not a knock on this bike because basically this bike is now it's a track bike that happens to have a license plate on it but Honda used to be known as the motorcycle brand that had a super bike that was more street oriented same with the Suzuki GSX-R1000 so gone are those days now uh, I had one of the last Mohicans with the 2012 CBR 1000 double R which had more comfortable ergonomics I was really comfortable on that bike and I enjoyed that bike so much on the street and the only reason I sold it because I was going to get some sort of new Street Fighter type of bike or maybe even a new CBR. I was hoping they'd come out with a sick CBR and they have. Uh, but I don't know if I want to spend that type of money for this bike and then I have to spend more money to change the ergonomics on it. And I don't ride tracks so it's almost a sin to get this bike if I'm not riding track and just to be tooling around on the streets. So I'm on the fence on whether to get this bike or not. But overall I have to say Honda hit a home run with this bike. And Mark Marquez likes this bike, guys. Amazing. The motor GP, huh? They like it. Woo! It's powerful! So nice to ride this bike. It's a fantastic bike, even though he's getting paid by Honda to say that. <laughs> but I, I truly think this is going to be a sick bike. So stay tuned. Hey, let me know, guys, in the comments. What do you think about this new bike? You think it's awesome or what? Let's talk about it. For those of you guys that want to get my gear, you know, like my airbag vest, my new carbon fiber helmet with mirror shield, it's ultra lightweight, uh, leather jackets, leather pants, camo pants, gloves, cameras, all my stuff. I always include links in the description and comment section of my videos or go to my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab, my gear. Thumbs up. Check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bug Out Moto.